If you're a long-time fan of the EGM Rank series, then you've already seen us count down Namco's most popular fighting games, as well as tackle Ridge Racer, their number one racing franchise. So with that out of the way, where do we go from here? Well, we take to the sky, of course! That's right, it's about time we jump into that cockpit and take a serious look at the Ace Combat series. What did Electronic Gaming Monthly think of these games back when they first came out? What was their favorite installment? Now, before you ask, EGM reviewed a total of seven Ace Combat games between 1989 and 2008. That includes pretty much everything from the main series games, along with one of the handheld releases. Unfortunately, the magazine chose not to review the first installment, Air Combat, and then went out of business before games like Joint Assault, Infinity, and Skies Unknown were released. Yeah, that's a shame, but we still have a great list of games to talk about. What we're going to do today is count down the best and worst Ace Combat games using Electronic Gaming Monthly's own words and scores. There's no editorializing here, we're just going to focus on what the critics said back when these games first came out. So with one hand on the ejection button and the other clutching a barf bag, this is EGM Rank's Ace Combat. Kicking things off at number 7, we have Ace Combat Zero The Belkin War on PlayStation 2. Ooh, this is what it's like to pilot a multi-million dollar jet at Mach whatever, put me down for deferment. Zero inspires the invention of new swear word combinations thanks to its no checkpoint philosophy and plain crappy targeting. Strangely, Zero sometimes forgets that your missiles can actually lock onto targets, and I often had to switch weapons back and forth before it would remember. The insipid story and fun for five minute split screen multiplayer don't help the war effort much either. Number 6 Ace Combat 3 Electrosphere on PlayStation. This would be far more worthwhile if it was a bit more challenging. It looks fantastic, boasts lots of good stuff to keep you excited, but if you're a halfway competent game player, you'll whiz through this one in no time. It's certainly more imaginative than previous Ace Combats, as it tries very hard to blend its cool bits from PC sims with arcade game sensibilities. Things like the padlock view make a big difference to the feel of this game. It's something to rent. Number 5, Ace Combat X Skies of Deception on PlayStation Portable. The Ace Combat series has always been in that tough spot of being a reliable series that provides solid air combat while offering precious little exposition. With each episode, Namco has pumped more and more story into the game, and you know what? It makes little difference. It's hard to get it up for fictional nations going after other fictional but presumably bad nations. That doesn't detract from the solid single-player campaign, which despite some cringe-worthy voice acting and debriefings, still manages to convey the thrilling sense of being in the cockpit during aerial sorties. Just make sure you have enough friends in the wireless multiplayer, though, or you'll have long episodes of high-speed meandering in the sky. Number 4, Ace Combat 6 Fires of Liberation on Xbox 360. Frequent flyers of the Ace Combat series will feel like they've been on this flight before. Yeah, you get sort of fun multiplayer modes and a better, although largely superficial, sense of participating in the all-out war. But the game still has the same too dramatic plot and the same ground-pounding and dogfighting missions with the occasional flying fortresses or Death Star Trench-style tunnels. Still, the first Xbox 360 installment looks breathtaking. From the all-hell-is-breaking-loose battles to the way the sun suddenly dazzles you when you break above the clouds, it all makes for beautiful deja vu. 
Number three, Ace Combat 4 Shattered Skies on PlayStation 2. Its gameplay isn't revolutionary, and a couple of the missions get a tad tedious. But Ace Combat 4 sure <laughs> looks pretty, which is half the reason flying buffs play the air combat games anyway. The terrain is photorealistic, until you swoop too close to the blurry ground. And the game packs slick effects like billowing clouds and blinding downpours, not to mention loads of authentic radio chatter. Now, that's not to say that Ace Combat 4 dishes out nothing but eye candy. Most of the missions pack a solid variety of objectives, although you can rearm and get repairs anytime you want, which makes things kinda easy. Number 2, Ace Combat 5 The Unsung War on PlayStation 2. Ace Combat 5 is not any kind of quantum leap over Ace Combat 4. The new pre-rendered cutscenes are nice, but not necessary, and while it's a cool idea in theory, the highly touted Wingman command system doesn't really give a measurable feeling of command over the rest of the squadron. That said, if you liked Ace Combat 4, then this is more of the same good stuff. You get gorgeous planes, complex missions, and a real feeling of being in the middle of a war thanks in large part to the scripted events, radio chatter, and the massive scale of it all. My biggest beef is with the checkpointless multi-part missions. Yeah, they offer a rewarding challenge, but when the first half ain't so tough while the second is, you'll likely be replaying them more than you'd like. And finally, at number one, it's Ace Combat 2 on PlayStation. I wasn't a big fan of the flight combat games up until now. Ace Combat 2 is the cream of the crop. Why? One simple word, variety. Ace Combat 2 has several planes and they all behave differently with plenty of nonlinear missions that are long and challenging. The primary objectives are always different, and the occasional optional wingman makes things interesting. My only complaint is that it's too hard to get any machine gun kills on a flying enemy. But that again, missile kills are slightly harder to get too. The enemies in Ace Combat 2 are smart. Most of them will try to evade your missiles. You know, if they can. This tiny bit of realism makes the game all the more enjoyable. Roger that. Bandits at 2 o'clock. Tally ho. Flash 1. Come on. Got you. Flash 2. There's 3. What the? Bandits on me. Still on me. <sighs> Sorry, Grandma. <clears throat> Ace Combat 4, rated E for everyone. Hey, thanks for watching me count down these classic Ace Combat games. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new episodes just like this almost every week. We've already tackled Tekken, Soul Calibur, Ridge Racer, Mario, Sonic, Zelda, Batman, The Mutant Turtles, Castlevania, Contra, Resident Evil, and so many more. We have a whole playlist full of these episodes, so, you know, give that a look if you have an afternoon to spare. Now, here's the question I have for you. What's your favorite Ace Combat game? Is it one of these that EGM covered? Or maybe it's one of the ones they never got to? I know the franchise has a loyal following, so I'm excited to see your thoughts in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back later this week with a sequel to A Christmas Carol. No, really, that's what's going on. It's not even Thanksgiving yet. While you wait for that, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 